Hello, great people. This is Frank Chase Jr. again with you concerning tithing. We want to continue our discussion in part 20. Part 20. I hope you have enjoyed all the previous uh, installations of the tithing study that we have given you. And today we want to talk about how did the tithe, how did the historic food tithe in Israel, agricultural tithe in Israel, get commuted to cash money, the Benjamins, so to speak. Uh, we want to talk about that today and give you some insight, not a extensive, but some historical analysis of what and how that happened. Uh, and any all this the stuff that I'm going to talk about is pretty much readily available on the internet and I am not saying anything that you cannot research on your own and discover. And thank God for the Catholic Encyclopedia, because many of the things I'm going to discuss, it is already documented and, and written down. And the Catholic Church has kept great records of what they have done throughout history. Now, I want to address uh, something that people have addressed me about concerning this prayer shawl that I have on. Um, I think people have, some people have a problem with it, uh, and I don't. I'm not a rabbi, and I'm not trying to be a rabbi, but I wear this prayer shawl out of respect for the Israelite people. I wear this prayer shawl out of realizing that Christianity is, in part, and would not exist unless we had the Jewish people, the Israelite people, and I'm representing their culture and I'm trying to uh, make sure that we don't turn uh, the Israelite, historic Israelite people into something that they're not. And so I wear this out of respect, uh, the prayer shawl, out of respect for their culture. And uh, that's basically it. So don't read anything into this uh, prayer shawl here. Uh, I just wear it out of respect. I enjoy studying the Hebrew and understanding the Israelite people and their clothing that they wore. And I wear this simply out of respect of my savior who probably wore one like this uh, or something similar to this, maybe not exactly. Uh, so if you have a problem with it, you're being legalistic. So far, we're going to get into this when we come back and we're going to find out exactly how the tithe was commuted to money as we dig into the history, we'll be right back. Well, Frank Chase back with you again. Let's dig into a little bit of history here to find out exactly what happened. Uh, it is amazing that when you start doing biblical research, what you will discover concerning the tithe. Now, in all of the tithing studies that I have given you, uh, it is not exhaustive. It is highlights of many things that I have discovered over the past two years. And so I encourage every one of you out there that listen to these videos that you will go in and do even deeper study than I have. Because if you want to know the truth, the Bible simply says, study to show thyself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. So now, what happened in history? What was the activating event that caused the food tithe, the agricultural tithe, the tithe that God requested according to the law, according to the Torah, how was it changed? Did it happen overnight or was it over a period of time? Well, based on historical facts, it was done over a period of time. And as we know, History and history, secular history, has always had an impact on biblical understanding. And so here is what we're going to do is we're going to read some statements and discuss some information about this as we go through this particular study. Now, as we know, when you look at Exodus 35, we know exactly how God wanted the Israelite temple to be supported. And in Exodus 35, it tells you exactly. And let's read that for a moment because it's important to understand how God set up the financial support of the physical temple. Exodus 35 says, 
take ye from among, take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord, whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it, an offering of the Lord, gold, silver, and brass. And if we look at uh, number five, I mean, verse 22, it says, and they came, everyone whose heart stirred him up and everyone whom in his spirit made willing that they brought the Lord an offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation and for all his service and for the holy garments. And as you can see, God wanted us to support the temple with free will offerings. And he wanted to be done with a willing heart, with an open heart, as the spirit moved. And when the spirit moves you to give, you will give according to your heart. And that is exactly how he wanted the temple to be supported. Exodus 35 is clear. If you go to Exodus 29, then that same chapter, you will see another verse. If you go to Exodus 36, 3 and 7, you will see it again. So it is clear how God wanted to support it, and it can work. We're talking about two to three million Israelites here. There was enough money to support the temple. We'll be right back, and we're going to give you an additional information. Okay, now let's look into this. How was the modern financial mandatory tithing system created uh, in our modern day churches today? How was this done? Well, if you go back and you check the Catholic encyclopedia, you will be able to discover exactly what happened in history and exactly how that impacted churches up until today. Now, if you remember, some of this started in the fourth century. And here's what we're going to read to you to show you exactly how it happened. Constantine, everybody remembers Constantine in the Roman Empire. Constantine in the fourth century and made Christianity the state religion. Some believe that Constantine really wasn't a Christian, so whether that is the case or not is not the point here. He made Christianity the state religion in the Roman Empire, and that free will offerings was replaced with various forceful means of raising money. Now, this is, this is documented fact. Constantine began a huge building program. He constructed churches and renovated pagan temples for use in what would be become the Roman Catholicism. That is how, that's how the Roman Catholic Church began under Constantine. After all, they knew that they were the true temple of God. All the early 12th century Christians knew that they were the temple of God. But under Constantine and the Roman Empire, they began these huge, massive building programs. And as a result, it needed to be paid for. And there had to be a method to raise money to pay the mortgages for all of these huge edifices. So they began to build buildings and constructed them all over the empire. If you do a study of the things Constantine and his mother did in Christianity, you would be shocked exactly what they did. And so it is simply amazing at what happened. So let's look at this and see exactly what went on. The evolution of money tithing replaced food tithing through the method of people suspending their common sense to embrace ignorance during that time. Simply saying this, according to the Catholic Encyclopedia, here is exactly what happened. As the church expanded and various institutions arose, it became necessary to make laws which would ensure the proper and permanent support of the clergy. Because as this stuff increased, there had to be a method and a need to support all of the clergy that was coming in to the system. The payment of tithes was adopted from the old covenant, the old covenant, and the earliest positive legislation on the subject seems to be contained in the letters of the bishops assembled at the Council of Tours in 567 AD and the canons of the Council of Macon in 585. 
This is in the this is in the Catholic Encyclopedia, and there is no doubt that the Catholic Encyclopedia documented that the early bishops had to find a way to commute the agricultural tithe to money, and they had to pull a scripture out of the old covenant that was strictly for agricultural tithing and commuted to money. That is the scripture in Malachi. We'll be right back to read you a little bit more about the commutation of agricultural ties to greenbacks. Hello again, Dr. Frank Chase Jr. Now, I know some of this historical information may be boring, but when you fail to study history, you are doomed to be deceived by error because many things that happen in our uh, churches today are directly related to the Catholic Church. Now, I want to make a clarification here. Many of the Catholic churches today do not enforce or mandate the tithing of money now, as they did in the early date stages of the Holy Roman Empire, where it was forced. Fear tactics were used to extract the money from all of the parishioners. That is not happening today. I've talked to many, many different Catholics, and they said that is not what's being done today. And many, and some of them that I've talked to did not even know that as the early days of the Catholic Church began, that these forceful tactics were used. So we must look at this information so we can determine how it has impacted the interpretation of God's biblical tithe. Now, we must understand, and what I just read is about the phrase to make laws. That means man-made laws. They made laws based on a scripture text to enforce tithing, would, it, would ensure tithing of money would remain throughout the centuries and throughout all ages to support the clergy. The mighty Holy Roman Catholic Church who created man-made laws to permanently support clergy. These laws were not from the Bible. They slowly over the centuries began a systematic campaign to eliminate food as the tithe to replace it with money. How do we know this? They are the richest organization in the world. And to build cathedrals throughout Europe and many empires, which now stand as empty mausoleums or museums. Many of these buildings that were uh, built are now closed or museums or mausoleums today. We have history. We have viable evidence that the Holy Roman Empire had an impact on the entire world. Now, uh, we'll be right back and I'm going to share something else with you concerning Charlemagne's successor. We're back again I'm going to read one more statement and we're going to close out this segment and I will continue in segment 21 on tithing the historical analysis. Now, if you do not know this, all of this can be found on the internet. And let me show you again how this is done. Around AD 250, Cyprian, and you can look this up, Cyprian tried to impose tithing in Carthage in North Africa. But his ideas of tithing were never adopted. This is the money tithe we're talking about. In AD 585, the local church council of Macon in France also tried to enforce tithing on its members, but they were unsuccessful in their endeavors. This shows you that the tithing system of money was re vi vividly rejected by the early believers. Uh, it wasn't until A.D. 777 that Charlemagne, Constantine's successor, Charlemagne legally tried, legally allowed the church to collect tithes. They finally allowed it by the law to legally collect tithes. And when that was done, the cat was out of the bag, the tiger was out of the, out of the den, and they went on a unrelentless campaign to collect the food, the money tithe for centuries. And even though people fought against it, they still forced it. 